I've always marveled at how exposure to the wild game lifestyle inevitably leads to a desire for direct involvement. That was certainly the case with these two gals here, Helen Cho and Brittany Brothers. For years, we've worked together at Meat Eater. In that time, they've eaten more than their fair share of wild game, though neither has actually ventured out on a hunt. Now, on a late season hunt for cow elk in Montana, we're gonna fix that problem, the cold and steep way. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. The Sweetgrass Hills are a few clusters of low mountains about 50 miles off the eastern slope of the northern Rockies. They rise abruptly from the Great Plains, covered in pine, grass, bare rock, and absurd amounts of wind. In reality, this hunt started about eight months ago, when Brittany and Helen took a hunter safety course right smack in the middle of Manhattan. Helen's birthplace and Brittany's adopted home. What type of rifle was that? Bolt action. Bolt action. From there, they began the long process of learning how to handle firearms safely. Good. And to shoot straight. You're shooting great. Since I'm gonna need a little help on this hunt, I call in my buddy, Ryan Callahan. We get to our hunting location just before dark and quickly erect a watertight and heated camp. Our hunt begins tomorrow morning, well before daybreak. I'm excited to be here because I've been working on the show for so long that I've developed this sense of, okay, if I'm gonna eat meat, like I feel like I should at least once in my life take responsibility for it myself. Yeah. That's my number one reason why I wanna be out here. Working for the show has totally changed my perspective on the ethics of eating meat. I mean, even now in New York, like none of our friends like hunt. I grew up in Brooklyn. No one in my family hunts. Yeah. They don't even fish. This is like so far from, you know, anything that I'm familiar with, so. If you get elk, would your parents eat some meat? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> As we start our hunt, I'm feeling the familiar stress and excitement that goes with taking a new hunter out. The first few days are quiet and tough. Not much happens. The hills and the wind and cold beat us down, and most of the time is filled with a lot of basic hunting lessons. These are fresh out Oh, I see. See how they melt into the snow? Yeah. Milk have a body temperature, a lot warmer than ours. You starting to sweat? Yeah. Not a little bit, but not much. All right, well, let me know because we'll chill out. In elk hunting, there's an inevitable sprint, but we don't need to do that yet. But at some point, it's like, I got to get there right now. So. doesn't make you just a passive observer. It tells me something that I need to know. Whoa. You want to keep your feet as straight. Are you as serious? As yeah. That's like the most efficient way really? to walk. Really? Yeah. Huh. It's a lot steeper than it looks. You might not think of walking as a hunting lesson, but stability in steep country is a learned skill. Is he just made with like an extra joy or something? Oh my God, there's no way I can do this. Pray to leave this tree. Psst. Zigzag. Like we don't gotta go far. Oh. No way. I have to remind myself that not everyone has logged the necessary miles to master the art of going uphill when snow-assisted gravity wants you going downhill. I used to work for a guy who described elk hunting as up the hill, down the hill. It's not a hill. <laughs> but here's the thing. Every bit of elevation we're gaining right now, we will not lose. You just got a lot of it out of the way right there. You get up there, and then we're going to see what the landscape offers. After taking a lunch break, 
Ryan and Helen hit a fresh trail where a large group of elk passed through not moments before. Uh, and we missed them. They came right underneath our nose, 250 yards probably. Unbelievable. Yeah, how does that happen? We're just going to ease around, okay. get set up for when they hopefully come back out in the evening. They follow the trail, hoping for the best. And just as they crest the next hill, they're right there, 150 yards. It's just very wide open. We're going to wait for them to make a move. Get put around in the chamber. They're bunched up really tight, so they're going to decide to go one way or another. Yeah, try to be as patient as we can. We're just going to slide down. OK, get ready, get ready. OK, just wait for them to thin out. Find one by herself with nothing behind her. See your broadside? OK, wait. Go swing back to the far left. There's one in. It's quartering away. Just be patient. Take the shot when you have it, OK? OK, hang on. It's OK. They're not gone. They're playing into our hand. We don't know what they're going to do. Damn it, they should have taken a shot. They could come right back through the saddle. OK. Oh, man, stand up, Alan. Okay, Helen, I'm going to go pick up the stuff. Just start walking for the saddle right there, and I'll meet you over there. It was amazing to see the herd, but equally as frustrating. I had one in the crosshairs. Yeah. I wanted to shoot that cow so badly. Every single one had a little piece behind it. I couldn't get a clear shot. Yeah. I want to wound another one. You did the right thing. It definitely doesn't feel like it. Believe me. From what I saw, I didn't see a shot I could take. Helen and Brittany agreed to limit their shots to broadside and under 200 yards. I find that a lot of hunters' confidence in their shooting abilities seems to increase in direct correlation to their desperation, but not Helen. I'm proud of you. You did a great job. It's what you're supposed to do. I'm going to be thinking about that shot for a long, long time. That's yeah. for sure. While Helen and Ryan were mixing it up with their herd of elk, Brittany and I made a long hike toward a prime glassing location. After a couple of hours, we finally get to the area we want to hunt. Hiking up these epic hillsides, I'm kind of thinking, like, better be for something, you know? Do you feel extra pressure to get something because you're a female hunter and there aren't many female hunters? Maybe that's why I kind of wanted to do a big hunt like this instead of tree stand hunt because I wanted to prove that like women are just as tough as dudes yeah. as much as I may have bitched and moaned a little bit. I understand that. We glass for another while with not much success until just before dark. Oh, a whole bunch of cow elk. No way. Where? Right down here, coming up out of that bottom. <gasps> I'm initially excited about finding this group of cows, but it's nothing to rush into. We'd never reach them before dark. We'll have to try to put a move on them in the AM. They might very well just be right back on that face tomorrow. Gives us something to work with, man. There's some elk around, you know? I'm so excited. <laughs> The next day, the wind is howling. As time passes, we're starting to think about how it might feel to go home empty-handed. But after scouring the area, we finally find what we're looking for. There's the herd. You gotta move fast. Come on. Yeah, I can wait, see wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. 
stop right here. Look right there again. Can you find the elk? They're all cows. I don't see them anymore. Yeah, they're all gone. Stop to see through the trees. Yeah. By this point, we've shadowed the herd for almost an hour. We keep bumping elk, but there are so many of them and they're so confused that we have constant shot opportunities, almost. It's one of those situations of having too much of a good thing. It's impossible for me to convey exactly which animal to shoot at. Okay, there they are. I just don't know what to do to get you a shot. It's 276 yards. There's a lot of wind. Eventually, we hit the bottom of the canyon as the elk are cresting the other side. Man, I'd love to tell you to take that, but I don't think you should take it. I, I won't take it if you don't think I should take it. No, I'm not gonna no, do it. Too that. windy, too far. God, there they are. Plenty of elk. <laughs> What'd you think of that? was pretty exciting, huh? When we were going above the herd, when we were paralleling them, yeah. I was just like, come on, man. Just one little open band or, or anything, yeah, or they'd hit a field. or How come they can't have a scree slide when you want one, man? Because if they had had to come across the scree slide below us, you'd have been loving it. Yeah. That was close. Though. I'm impressed with Brittany's ability to show restraint. I think of hunting as a discipline, and it requires just that, discipline. There are bigger things happening out here than just shooting bullets at animals. You got like, what, half an hour left? Yeah. What are you thinking? What can you do? With only a little daylight left, it's clear that Brittany is not going to bag an elk. You ever see a movie called Jeremiah Johnson? No. It's about life and death and beauty and all that stuff through the lens of a guy who wants to be a mountain man. But anyways, there's this guy. He's kind of an old sage. At one point, he tells the new arrival, you can't cheat the mountain. You can squeeze it and kick it. And in the end, it's just going to kind of do what it wants to do sometimes. Yeah, no kidding. I don't feel like I cheated any mountains here. <laughs> <laughs> While Brittany and I had our chase, Callahan and Helen were having their own piece of action. They spent much of their day freezing their asses in a makeshift blind, but toward dusk, they ventured out. Instead of focusing on this one spot, we'll kind of retrace our steps and glass where we haven't been glassing all day. In that way, we have enough time to try to hustle and make a move on something if something is poking out, because this has been, unfortunately, quite quiet today, with the exception of the howling wind. And wouldn't you know it, they get onto some elk. They Oh my god. Hang tight, hang tight. It's gonna be a long shot if we go from here. About 350 right there. We're gonna try to get closer. Wind is just way too big to take 350 yard shot. Yeah. yeah. I don't wanna take that shot. Still some feeding in the trees right there. That's doable. Let's get down to this next little group of trees. Go really slow. You see him? Okay, put around him. Get a good rest. You can shoot that cow, the dark one across the creek. Shoot just the other side. It's okay, it's okay. You can shoot the one on the right. Whenever you're ready, just take your time. 
I'm gonna shoot her. Yep. I'm gonna shoot her. Okay, hold, hold them. It's okay, Alan. 60 of them down here to the left. So I can see the grass. Okay, sit up. You see it on the right hand side? Yep. The one behind it is a cow. All right, I'm gonna shoot her. Hold your crosshairs about five inches to the left. Put it right on the shoulder. Okay. Whenever you're ready. Nice and easy. You hit her. Did I miss? No, reload. I don't see her. Where is she? She's the lone cow. She went down. Put your gun on safe. Did I miss her? No, you smacked her. I got her? Yeah, she's down. And we're gonna go down there together, okay? Okay. How's the adrenaline? I'm like shaking. Be excited, but also like have your game face on. You don't want to get up and run away. Right? Get up and run away? Yeah. What do you mean? They do that sometimes. They're tougher than nails. Quit following me around. Get up there. Do you think she's alive? I don't know. What do you think, Joe? This is like unreal. I have no words. It really turns the day around, huh? Yeah. You made a heck of a shot. I didn't quite get it where I wanted to get it before I studied it. Off but... the top of the pack. That's pretty darn good. Any elk is a trophy. Beautiful. One of the most amazing experiences like, ever. Highs and lows, right? I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you that so was much. Awesome. I couldn't have done it without you. Oh that was awesome. You're doing good. I'm proud of you. Amazing. I, I Look what you did. It. I can't believe it. After a few days of suffering, Helen is rewarded with being able to gut her first big game animal. Cut right this? There. Yep. Cut this? Yep. That's a big heart. Thank you. <laughs> now we can all have a taste of the best game meat on earth, starting with the heart and liver. That's perfect. I'm excited to try this. Me too. When I was a kid, we would always eat the heart when you got something. Mm -hmm. There's a symbolism you can't escape. When you feel something strong, it's there, it's like beating in you. You need to have the first bite of the heart. Yep, absolutely. It's your first kill. Heart is where guts meet meat. It's delicious. Just so good. good. That is, is delicious. Good. Yeah. Is, I did not expect that. That's a very, very, very good liver. Well, I cooked it. Very mild. Wow. The liver is, it's strengthening. Potent? Yeah. Potent. You eat it, you're like, ugh, <laughs> ugh, liver. <laughs> you guys defied my expectations, man. I was worried for you. Were you? You remember I tried to talk you out of it. I know, we were very persistent. What's your relationship to hunting now that you didn't get one? We didn't want like an easy hunt, really. And maybe <laughs> we got a lot more than we bargained for, but it was definitely worth it because like those few moments of adrenaline that we had got me so excited. You know, getting an elk in your scope is a rite of passage. Getting your hands on an animal is a huge rite of passage. Getting to eat something that you shot is a huge rite of passage. I have like a lot more respect for hunters, you know? It's definitely, right? yeah, it's like, it's not easy. It's the opposite. You're just sitting there being patient hours and hours in the hopes that an elk or a herd or whatever will walk by. It makes you good at being uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, which is a hard thing to be good at. I'm gonna buy a Scaremaster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was like somewhat prepared for those hikes, but not for the wind. And that is like a whole other thing that will just drive you insane. It is maddening. <laughs> we had some adventures, man. Thanks, guys. Time. Thank you so much. You know, we had been talking about this for, for many, many years. I, I know, I can't believe yeah. it finally happened. We're here. <laughs> you guys are fun company, man. It allowed me to like really see a lot of stuff through new eyes, you know? I've accompanied my own wife and a handful of ex-girlfriends on their first hunting trips. 
And while I've never had someone regret seeing something so emotionally raw as harvesting one's own meat, I have encountered perspectives and emotions that are either absent in most guys or more likely buried deeply beneath a cloak of macho phoniness. <laughs> if we're gonna be seeing more first time women hunters in the outdoors, and believe me, we are, we should learn to welcome them as equals, though to do so without missing whatever fresh perspectives we might be lucky enough to have them share with us. Times change, but the mountain does not. It's here for everyone, always has been.